In this video, we're going to be talking about why you should never eat a raw orange. Actually, in this video, we're going to be talking about raw milk and pasteurized milk. And if you haven't ever picked up your grocery store orange juice, you might not have noticed, but every single bottle of orange juice in the grocery store is also pasteurized. So we thought these visual aids might be a fun little comparison because here you have an unpasteurized product, right? The raw orange, which you would never go around your produce section saying, do you have any raw oranges? In raw the apples. Raw apples. And yet when it is sold in its fluid version at a grocery store, it is pasteurized and for a good reason. We could call this raw orange and cooked orange. We could call this raw milk and cooked milk. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference between raw milk or unpasteurized milk and the store-bought milk that we find in our grocery store? Sure. We're going to keep this simple and quick because we have loads of other content on this whole topic, including an entire free raw dairy guide. But this video is meant to be really short and to the point. Okay, so pasteurization was invented by a man named Louis Pasteur in the late 1800s to absolutely solve something called the milk problem. He wanted to help. He was absolutely trying to help. And not only did he try to help in the dairy industry, but even before that, he was commissioned to help the French wine industry be able to sell their wine further without it spoiling due to the natural enzymes. And so they began pasteurizing wine. Today, the wine industry doesn't pasteurize their wine anymore. You will not find pasteurized wine at the market, mm. but his legacy lives on with milk. There was a milk problem, meaning that as folks were migrating from the countryside and more agrarian societies into the urban setting of cities, they were bringing their dairy cows with them. Mm -hmm. And so their dairy cows were then penned up with a bunch of their other neighbor dairy cows, usually alongside maybe a distillery making alcohol out of mashed corn or barley or wheat, and so then those cows were then not only not on pasture, they were confined and they were being fed grain that is not biologically appropriate like for their diet. Like a garbage disposal. They were being treated as a garbage disposal. But for them at the time, they thought it was a win-win. Bring your cow to the city, they get to eat the byproduct of the manufacturing of alcohol, and then everyone wins. Well, it turns out these cows got incredibly unhealthy. They not only carried things like bovine tuberculosis and other illnesses that then would seep into the general public, Tons of infants died and, and sadly families were ripped apart by the production of really, really poor food. And I would say that the milk problem exists today, but in a different form. If you took a picture of the late 1800s version of these swill dil distilleries, and then you compare that to today's confinement dairies, unfortunately they look eerily similar. And so the difference here is that when we're talking about milk, purchased from a local farm that hasn't been pasteurized. That milk is from healthy cows on pasture, responsibly milked using sanitary methods, and that it's going to be a smaller operation. We're talking about small local farm pickup versus maybe going down to a giant milk plant and just asking for the milk raw. Okay, so pasteurization is the heating of milk. Cook You'll it. You're, you're cooking it, but it's a little more complex than that because there's all different types of pasteurization. There's ultra high temp pasteurization. Then you have things like vat pasteurization, which is a lower temp for longer periods of time. Mm. And then you have little things in between. So pasteurization happens in a wide range of temperatures and time frames. And what the, its whole goal is to deactivate the enzymes that are naturally occurring in milk. Those enzymes, by the way, that help you digest the milk, they're trying to deactivate so that we can render it completely free of, one, any harmful pathogens that might have entered the milk through the milking process, not that they inherently exist inside the milk, but say contamination from fecal matter or something in the bottling. And also the deactivation of enzymes is the main goal of pasteurization. Okay, so the dangers of raw milk, this is probably the number one biggest concern, is that if you take milk that is fresh from the cow's udder and you consume it, aren't you gonna get sick? So there's multiple different ways to think about this. One, we have to take in history, okay? How long have humans been consuming dairy in its whole raw form? Way longer than they have been consuming dairy in its pasteurized form. But here's the issue. Over the last 200 years, we've seen immense scale of the food industry, and so we have way wider distribution pathways and really, really um, centralized 
dairies, truthfully. A lot of the small dairies in the U.S. have completely dissolved, and now you're looking at big conglomerates who are producing milk. So the milk you find in the grocery store, this is not from just one cow. Okay, this could be from hundreds of cows, all bulked into the same tank and then pasteurized and then um, assigned a particular fat content. The milk inside of the fresh raw milk you're gonna get from a local farm is absolutely from one cow where your farmer is identifying the health of the cow. So to answer your question, the dangers of raw milk. If your milk is not produced from a healthy cow in a clean environment, absolutely it can carry dangerous, harmful pathogens and make people sick. The same way any kind of food, lettuce, tomatoes, meat, anything that is not processed in a clean or healthy environment is going to absolutely carry bacteria. Absolutely. And I want to stress that the bacteria is not inherently in the milk. A lot of times people think, well, raw milk is dangerous because it has bacteria in it, so we have to mm. pasteurize it. That's not the case. Raw milk is your calf's first food. If you think about it's equivalent to a human breast milk, right? It's your baby's first food. Your human breast milk is not sterile for your baby to, to take in. That's absolutely not. It's teeming with beneficial bacteria and enzymes mm. and proteins and all of these other elements of this beautifully rich milk that is absolutely understood as a beautiful food in every society in history, except for maybe today's. There are dangers of pasteurized milk too, though. We, that's something we don't ever hear about, we don't really talk about, is that once this milk has been pasteurized, if something contaminates it post-production, its ability to fight back is virtually eliminated. So mm. then you're gonna have a intense multiplication of bacteria um, and pathogens in the milk, which has actually led to more deaths than raw milk has in the last 200 years, which mm. is insane. So there are always risks when you're consuming food. That is not specialized to milk. I don't know why milk gets such a flack for that. But you're, you're consuming your lettuce, your spinach, your raw carrots, your apples, uh, your oranges, your meat from the grocery store, anything carries your a risk. Your sushi on half price sushi night. <laughs> everything carries a risk. So the benefits of raw milk is that everything that makes this food perfect as a first food for baby is still fully intact, unlike pasteurized milk. So in pasteurization, unfortunately, the delicate proteins are denatured during the heating process. Like I mentioned earlier, the enzymes are rendered completely inactive. And then you've got other issues where you're changing the way the fat molecules are through the homogenation process. And this is a completely um, processed food. Raw milk, on the other hand, is rich in vitamins A and K. It's got fantastic enzymes. It's a very enzyme rich food, which can be really beneficial for gut health and just overall um, assimilation of nutrients. And it's also mineral rich, it's got electrolytes. This is really what I consider a uh, superfood. Growing up, not everybody we knew was dairy free or lactose intolerant. Yeah, Nowadays, true. for some reason, everybody has some intolerance to lac lactose. Mm -hmm. Why is this? It's an interesting thought. And if you really look into the like first layer of unpasteurized milk and the potential benefits of unpasteurized milk, you will quickly find that there are a lot of these bacteria and enzymes that are in milk before it's pasteurized that help you digest that lactose. When you take away those bacteria and those enzymes out of the raw milk and you start to drink pasteurized milk, all of a sudden you have this epidemic in America where nobody can drink milk anymore and everything has to be weird Dairy free. Milk or what? Nut juices? Mm -hmm. Anyways, uh, if you today are having an issue consuming dairy, giving properly sourced and properly handled unpasteurized dairy could be worth a try. Where can you find raw dairy? So, like I mentioned before, we're not going to go up to our local dairy processing plant and ask for the milk raw. That would not be a smart and, re and responsible way to source it. There are loads of amazing online, I'm going to call them catalogs, where you can look for a local farm. Farmmatch.com is one of our favorites. There's always, there's also um, eatlocal.org, eatwild.com. There's all sorts of iterations that we'll link below in the description. Connect to your local farm. Every single state in the United States has different 
legalities around purchasing raw milk. In the state that we are in, it is illegal to purchase it from a retailer. We don't have that option. In California, they do. They can go to their grocery store and buy raw milk off the shelves. In Florida, they can under the guise that it is being sold as pet food. Okay, so look into your state's um, legislation. You can find information on that on realmilk.com. And if you're in a state like ours, you can benefit and obtain fresh raw dairy from something called a herd share, where you're basically buying into a private association and you can own part of that herd and pay for its feed and its shelter. And in return, as a shareholder, you are legally entitled to a portion of that cow's milk production. So. Go pick up some raw oranges. <laughs> We've been on the unpasteurized dairy journey for... Over seven years. Over seven years. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, it took me a couple of years to get past the term raw milk. Until I started to think about it a lot more and was like, hmm, why is it being branded this way? Yeah. And it's, it's intentionally being positioned in a disgusting kind of way so that we don't want it. But if you started calling this raw milk and cooked milk, I mean, cooked milk doesn't sound very good either, mm -hmm. right? Um, anyhow, raw milk, protein shakes for me all day long. I am, I am crushing raw milk on a daily basis, mm -hmm. personally. So we go through at least a gallon and a half a week. We're actually out of fresh raw milk at the recording of this video. So this milk in front of you is two weeks old that we now use for baking because it's just a little sour. And um, we're anxiously waiting for our raw milk pickup coming this week because that's one of the things when you source raw milk from a local farm, if you run out, you can't just pop out to the grocery store and, get, and grab a gallon or two. You've got to wait. If you have questions about raw milk or dairy, you can check us out at homegrowneducation.com. We've, We've got a, a raw dairy guide on there to kind of answer a lot more of your questions. Also leave a comment down below if there's something you would like us to demonstrate and or talk about regarding raw milk in the future. Mm-hmm. All right, I feel like I have a sneeze coming on. <laughs> <laughs>